What actually is earnest money? Here's the deal, inside secret. No one else is here, it's just you and me. A lot of people act like they know what earnest money is, but they don't exactly know, and that's dangerous. That can get you in some real trouble. So I'm just gonna give you a super simple definition of what earnest money is. Now, let me give you a brief disclaimer. I'm a real estate broker in the state of Texas. Generally speaking, this works the same everywhere, but it could be different in your state or region or area. So you might need to check with somebody, but this is gonna get you over the hill of knowing what you're doing when you're making an offer on real property, on real estate, residential or commercial, um, and primarily residential, and what's happening when you're selling a home and what that means. So earnest money is a semi-refundable deposit that a buyer makes when purchasing property. Now, 999 out of a thousand transactions that I'm involved in are residential real estate, single family homes, a house that's not connected to another one, plenty of townhomes and condos, but almost everything is a true single family house. So what, what's going on here? The buyer is saying to the seller, hey, I'm gonna put some money up early just to let you know that I'm serious and I'm committed. Now, as long as I do everything I said I was gonna do in the contract, that money is gonna be yours when I buy the house. It's gonna to apply to my purchase price and fees and all that stuff. So I've got some money on the line that I'm not gonna be ridiculous or, if, or I'll lose it, right? That's why I say semi-refundable. If I do something that is not consistent or not allowed or, or planned for in the contract, then I lose that earnest money and it goes to you. So semi-refundable deposit is how I tell clients all the time that that works. Um, here's where it can get tricky though. In a residential transaction in Texas, it is required for the buyer and seller to release those funds if for any reason the transaction does not move forward. So let's say that one of us cannot meet the full terms of the contract or one of us chooses within the terms of the contract to cancel the transaction. Then both sides need to sign a release that says, the money is rightfully going to the seller because the buyer can't move forward or to the buyer because they had the ability to withdraw from the contract and they're doing that within the boundaries of the agreement. So it can actually get a little bit tricky because at times you have met the terms of the agreement, but the other side disagrees about something. It should be clear in the contract, but it sadly isn't always super clear. So. There needs to be more than just a black and white understanding of what the contract says about earnest money and sort of a relationship and communication that's very clear on what's going on. That's why I say semi-refundable. There's always risk here. There's always a chance that you do everything right and the other side doesn't see it as clearly as you and can make it somewhat difficult to get your earnest money back. Now, while I say that, there are times that a very large earnest money deposit is really powerful for you. So let's say you're making an offer in a really competitive real estate market and you say to the seller, I'm willing to put way more than normal on the line. I'm willing to put that out there. By the way, when you when you deposit earnest money, you're depositing it with an in an escrow account, typically in Texas at a title company. The title company is the neutral third party excuse me, they're the neutral third party that kind of holds the money and makes sure that money and deeds and titles and payments and keys and all those things get routed where they're supposed to go based on the contract. But um, remember, because of what we said before, there's always some risk. So if you make a larger than normal earnest money deposit and normal in our market at the moment is around 1%, $500,000 offer, $5,000 earnest money, million dollar offer, $10,000 earnest money, give or take, right around there. So let's say I'm making a $500,000 offer and I offer you $50,000 in earnest money. That's 10 times what is kind of this typical norm in our area. As long as the seller realizes that, if their agent explains that, or if you explain it for them, then they ought to recognize that as a more serious buyer. That's where earnest money can be more than a formality and become a tool or a lever, a negotiating item. 
Uh, obviously, a lower than normal earnest money indicates you might not be as serious or it might not be as financially capable or might not be as prepared. Um, so it really can do a lot of things. But if all goes well and everyone moves forward, then the earnest money is just already in escrow when you need to bring other dollars to escrow. Your total purchase price or your closing costs, upfront fees, prepaid mortgage insurance or taxes or escrow fees or loan origination fees or whatever else. It could be, you know, plumbing bill or whatever, anything tied to the contract. So that's kind of a long explanation of what earnest money is, but each thing I'm sharing with you there is intended to avoid mistakes that we see happen a lot in the residential real estate market in and around earnest money, either mistakes being made or misunderstanding. And I started the video with explaining that a lot of people think they're supposed to know all this. And so they act like they know all this. And because they act like they know, oftentimes a real estate agent won't explain it to them or the title company won't explain it to them when really, I think, even if you already know, it's worth slowing down a little bit and having some things like this explained to you because they can create some dangerous, risky situations. So hopefully this has been helpful. If it has been helpful, let us know in the comments. If there's an aspect of earnest money that I didn't explain that you would like an explanation of, ask that question in the comments. We read every single one, we check them, We'll come back and answer that in the comments, or maybe we'll shoot another video for you. But thanks for tuning in. Check out the other videos on the channel on all sorts of different things. What is escrow? How does title insurance work? Inspection periods, offers, contracts, pricing, negotiation, uh, different parts of town here around Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Hopefully we can be helpful you, to you in some other ways. And of course, if you're ever thinking about buying or selling or investing in real estate in Dallas or Fort Worth, Texas, or anywhere near here, just let us know. We'd love to help you. Contact information is below. I'll catch you on the next video.